Now in an earlier tutorial I showed you that when you're dividing by powers, as long as you've got two things to the same base, then when you're dividing it works out to be x to the power m minus n. You just subtract the powers. So for instance, if you had say x to the power 8 divided by x to the power 5, what you would get is x to the power 3. It doesn't have to be x's, it can be any letter, as long as those letters are exactly the same. So if I have y to the power 8 divided by y to the power 5, you'd end up with y to the power 3 or y cubed. But what I want to do in this tutorial is extend this idea to negative powers. And to do that, what we'll do is we'll get rid of that and we'll start with say 5 cubed divided by 5 to the power 4. Let's see what this means. According to the rule, then we would get 5, that's our base, to the power 3 take away 4, 5 to the power minus 1. But what does this mean? Well, if we were to step backwards, we would see that 5 cubed divided by 5 to the power 4, let's just take that out, is short for 5 times 5 times 5 divided by 5 to the power 4, which is 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. The 5 repeatedly multiplied by itself 4 times over. Now, if we were to simplify this by cancelling out the 5s, 5 into 5 goes 1, 5 into this 5 goes 1, and repeat this all the way down, then what we have is essentially 1 times 1 times 1 on the top, which is 1, divided by 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1, times 5 is 5. Now we said earlier that this, according to the rule, where you subtract the powers, would be 3 take away 4 minus 1, 5 to the power minus 1. So can you see that this is exactly the same then as saying 5 to the power minus 1? OK, well, let's look at another one. Suppose we had 3 squared, for instance, divided by... It's got to be the same base value, mind you, so it has to be a 3 in this case, 3 to the power 6. According to this rule here, this would be 3 to the power minus 4, 2 take away 6. But what is 3 to the minus 4? Well, to answer that question again, what we've got to think about is, what does this really mean? Well, it's for 3 squared, that's short for 3 times 3. And for 3 to the power 6, we've got to repeatedly multiply that 3 6 times over. Like that, OK? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we can cancel this one down by 3 into 3 being 1. 3 into 3 goes 1. And we can do it again. And so when we simplify this, we've now got 1 times 1 on the top, which is 1, all divided by 1 times 1, which is 1, times 3, times 3, times 3, times 3. Well, that's short for 3 to the power 4. And you notice what we said earlier, that if we stuck to this rule, it would be 3 to the power 2 take 6, which is 3 to the minus 4. So hopefully you can see a connection between, say, 5 to the minus 1 and 1 over 5. It's as if I've got a 1 there. And in this case, 3 to the minus 4, 1 over 3 to the power 4. So in general, what am I trying to say? Well, we've got this new rule that essentially x to the power minus n is the same as 1 over x to the power n. And this is something I would encourage you to try and remember. It's really just a spin-off, essentially, of this rule over here, as you can see through these examples. OK, now let's just extend this further, and we'll look at a few more examples. I mean, suppose I had, say, 2 to the minus 1. What would that mean? Well, 2 to the minus 1, according to this rule, 
must be 1 over 2 to the power 1. The n here was a 1, and so it's 1 over x to the power n, x to the power 1, 2 to the power 1. And what's this when it's simplified further? Well, it's a half. If I had, say, 8 to the power of minus 2, what's that going to be? Again, by this rule, it's 1 over 8 squared. 1 over 8 squared is 1 over 64. Now, you don't have to be using numbers all the time. You can use letters. I mean, for instance, suppose you had to simplify a to the power 5 divided by a to the power 8. Well, I don't want to write this out as a times a times a, etc., all over a repeatedly multiplied by itself 8 times, when I know that this is going to be a to the power minus 3. When you subtract the powers, you're going to get, by this rule, a to the power minus 3. And what does that also mean? a to the power minus 3 is 1 over, in this case, a to the power 3. You'll also find that you can get mixtures. Mixtures of letters, for instance. Say you get x cubed y squared divided by x y to the power 5. Or if you had this to simplify, x cubed divided by x using this rule will be x to the power 3 take away 1, x squared in other words. When it comes on to y squared divided by y to the 5, then again using this rule you're going to have y to the power 2 take away 5, which is going to be y to the power minus 3. But you could simplify this bit to x squared times 1 over y cubed. Now, with a bit of practice, I wouldn't expect you to write x squared times 1 over y cubed because it just simply is x squared times 1, which is x squared, all divided by y cubed. So with practice, you should be able to go from there to there or give this alternative form. Now in my next tutorial, what I'd like to show you is to extend this result, this negative power result, to working with fractions which are to negative powers. So I hope you'll look at that uh, tutorial.